Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your guests, Race O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today, Elizabeth Jorgensen from Metro West Legal Services and Jamie Sabino from the Mass uh, Law Reform Institute. They're gonna be both talking to us about how you can deal with identity, identity theft uh, and other crimes by accessing their program, Civil Legal Aid for Victims of, the, of Crime. It's an initiative of theirs. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm her friend, Art Bergeron. Uh, uh, in my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. We're a large 70-person law, multi, multi-specialty law firm that does a whole bunch of stuff. I get to do nothing but elder law, which is what I really like. But this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you watched my shows or, or at the senior center or other, other places, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you identify with that and you just want to stay here in Framingham for the rest of your life, this is the show for you because it talks to the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about, like the one we're going to talk about today. They can help you do just that. My co-host is Grace O'Donnell. She always finds these great guests. Grace, you've got some great ones. More lawyers, though. We've got a boatload of lawyers today. Who have we got today? (laughs) Hi, Arthur. Our guests today are Elizabeth Jorgensen and Jamie Sabino. Elizabeth is an attorney at Metro West Legal Services, and Jamie Sabino is an attorney at Massachusetts Law Reform Institute. They're here today to talk to us about legal assistance available to victims of identity theft and other crimes. And this is through the Civil Legal Aid for Victims of Crime Initiative. That sounds really exciting. Thank you very much for finding these folks. So, Jamie, I'd like to start with you uh, in terms of giving us a bit of the history about this particular initiative. Yes. The Civil Legal Aid for Victims of Crime initiative is in its fifth year at this point, and it is funded from the federal government under the Victim of Crime Act dollars, which come to the state to the Massachusetts Office of Victims Assistance, MOVA, who then sends it to Massachusetts Legal Assistance Corporation, MLAC. So I've got enough initials for you. But then what it does is it goes out to legal service organizations across the state to help victims of crime meet the civil legal needs that come from their victimization. An example, you've been beaten up. You need to go on disability. You may need a lawyer to help you get benefits. You're a victim of elder abuse or domestic abuse, you may need a lawyer to help you get a restraining order or to be able to stay in your house or to oppose an eviction because of the violence in the household. It may be that you need some accommodation at work or in your housing because of what occurred from your crime. These attorneys throughout the state in regional Systems like uh, Lizbeth will talk about, Metro West Legal Services, and some statewide programs like the Disability Law Center, um, the Victim Rights Law Center, are available to help people. Now, it's about 30 lawyers across the state, and that's a drop in the bucket. So we can't provide full representation to any everybody, but we do try to at least speak to everybody, give them advice. Sometimes a call is all you need. Sometimes it's full representation. One of the issues that has come up frequently, particularly among older residents, is identity theft. So that's, I think, what Elizabeth will talk about, as well as the work she does at Metro West Legal Services. But actually, there's one thing I wanted to say. You do not need to be low income to access these services. Even though our lawyers are in legal service agencies, 
There is not an income restriction. You don't need to be uh, a citizen. The crime does not need to have happened in Massachusetts. It's if your civil legal needs are in Massachusetts. With that, turn it back. Great. Thank you, Jamie. That was really helpful to learn that much about this, and especially yeah. that it's available across the state. Right. Elizabeth, can you tell us more about the uh, identity fraud that happens to so many seniors? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, as as uh, Jamie mentioned, I am a, a senior staff attorney at Metro West Legal Services, and I joined here in 2019 um, under the CLABIC, Civil Legal Aid for Victims of Crime grant. Um, and under that grant, I am able to represent victims of crimes, including identity theft, with their civil legal need. Mm-hmm. And um, through that grant, I have met individuals um, in in the elder community and also in the non-elder community who have fallen victim to a scam or have had their confidential information, their protected information, their identity stolen or used without their uh, without their knowledge or authorization, mm-hmm. right? Um, I want to make clear at the onset that Metro West Legal Services is a legal aid that's based right here in Framingham. We're at 63 Fountain Street uh, with the district attorney's office upstairs. And this organization has been around for over 40 years. Okay. And I know Grace O'Donnell's name through her work with the elder unit here at Metro West Legal Services. And through that unit, they have been able to help older adults with identity theft issues as they may arise. Part and partial of housing work or um, benefit work um, and more comprehensive elder law services. So I am not replacing anything that this organization is doing. I'm just enhancing it in this particular area. Um, And this grant is allowing me to do a generalist practice. So I, I, I help um, immigrants. I help um, victims of domestic violence. I help students who have been bullied um, or victims of crime with educational um, matters that relate to that victimization. I help uh, people who are disabled in their SSA benefits claim if there's some relation to their disability and victimization um, and they've been denied uh, benefits. Uh, and uh, so my work is comprehensive, but I've really, I, I, I'm excited about the opportunity of um, presenting this information today on this program because um, the, the, the crime of identity theft is, is so heartbreaking because there isn't a, there's not always a cognizable solution, right? It, it is a crime. Right. And so there is local and federal authorities that, um, you know, I can direct a particular, you know, caller to to file the necessary complaints. But that's not necessarily going to get the thirty thousand dollars that were stolen back in that person's um, pocket. So a big part of this work and a critical component of this work is outreach. It's information sharing. It's in that is honestly the best way to protect against this terrible, terrible crime. Yeah, yeah. It, I, you mentioned that you have started working on this initiative since 2019. Is there an end date to this particular grant? Luckily, no. Uh, in fact, we are a poster child of good work for the Massachusetts Office of Victims Assistance. It's the largest grant they've ever given, and they are thrilled with our work because we've been able to reach and help so many victims of crime. Every year, we have a budget, depending on what the federal monies are, so it goes up and down a little, but I think we're here for the long haul. That's good to know. Thank you. And um, how much of a problem is identity theft in the Framingham area, since that's where we are? Do you have any sense of the numbers or the percentages of people affected? Right. Um, Well, you know, right now, I mean, identity theft and um, 
fraud has been prevalent for for decades, but specifically in the pandemic era, right? There has been a significant increase in data breaches, mm-hmm. okay, which includes you know identity theft and fraud and scams, okay, through many different types of uh, ways or you know imposter scams, phishings, emails. Um, just they just the state just released their two thousand and 21 numbers. Um, And you can always get these kind of statistics by looking at the Office of Consumer Affairs, okay, and and their state website. But um, the the Office of Consumer Affairs received 2,488 data breach notifications affecting 1.8 million people in Massachusetts. Okay, and, you know, so far in 2022, they had received 273 notifications that have impacted just under 200,000 Massachusetts residents. Um, And on what we're seeing, what the numbers are telling us is that no age group, no particular, you know, demographic race or so forth is immune to getting scammed. Um, the differences being maybe in the amount of money that you get scammed, right? So somebody that is under the age of 18, right, could get their social security number stolen, right? But the amount of, you know, consumer debt or, you know, credit damage that could happen in that case, you know, or actual money stolen is different than somebody who, you know, has a, a, a massive retirement account, right? Um, and um, it's, it's particularly important. And the reason why we're continuing the outreach efforts in this way is because we are seeing such an increase in those numbers in our state across all counties. I wanna point out a specific incident that I think highlights that. I have my mother-in-law's cell phone, a smartphone. She passed away five years ago, but I still have the phone there. We keep it so if one of my kids misplaces their phone, whatever, four or five times a day, there's a call that says scam likely. And, you know, this is a woman who's been dead for five years. And so they are reaching out in many ways. And my mother-in-law, bless her, was a active, intelligent woman. But in 96, some of those scams could have taken away the hard-earned financial security that she had from herself and her husband. Yeah, yeah I, we know some personal experiences of people who have been on a computer screen and all of a sudden something pops up and says, your computer has been uh, uh, invaded by a virus. Call this number and I'll help fix it. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of people who haven't experienced that or haven't been told about that do, you know, they panic in the moment and they make that call without realizing, gee, how did this person know there was a virus all of a sudden on my screen? You know, how could this really be somebody who's trying to help me? Uh, So, you know, that that's great that people are getting the word that there is an organization out there that can help them when some when they do fall victim to something like this. That's exactly right. And that's a lot. That's how my initial conversation usually happens with a caller that comes to Metro West Legal Services. They'll tell me, you know, what happened, either that they know that they were scammed and and they know that their their, uh, information um, was stolen from them. Right. Um, Or they suspect it. Right. Or they'll say, "Uh oh, I think I was duped. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I got into a situation, a conversation with somebody that I thought was legitimate. And I, I, ha- I have to admit, I gave them my driver's license or I, I, I bought some gift cards and I sent it to them. And I, I thought that I thought I had to do that. Right. And I and I, you know, so then I can unpack that. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, OK, so what do we do now? Right. What do we. So, yes, that was a scam. Right. And um, what are the choices that are that are available to you? And then I can also try to help them assess what the damage is. So sometimes people don't know, for example, that they can get you know an annual credit report for free or they don't know that you can freeze your credit. Right. And what the benefits are of that or, or repercussions in terms of 
you know, or no repercussions in terms of your credit score, right? To kind of, to, to empower the person to protect themselves because the, what the risk is, is that once you've been duped once, you, there's actually a high uh, likelihood that you're going to get scammed again and the scam's going to look a little different, right? So even though, you know, um, even though you, you might have already started your education on how to prevent scams from, from coming into your life, you, it, it is possible that you could get scammed again, even with this information. Right. So that's why it's so important to, you know, have annual checkups on the credit reports. Um, I, I obviously would talk to the person about what are their options in terms of reporting to the local authorities and, and, and the federal government. Um, in times uh, there, there's a way that you can communicate with creditors. Right. About um, depending on the facts of the case, you know, whether the person is judgment proof, meaning they don't have money to pay. Right. And and to stop harassing letters and to kind of put the the creditors on notice that, you know, the harassing letters need to stop because that's, you know, a uh, that's not allowed by law either. Um, and so there's there's a component of my legal work that is about finding the cho choices and the options based on the facts of the case, but also helping a person understand that they, that they are, um, they've been victimized by somebody who's a professional at what they're doing. They're a professional scammer. And so um, there's an emotional component to my work. A lot of people come to my office ashamed, deeply ashamed. And I, I, I try to alleviate that shame by, um, allowing the person kind of into my world and my perspective is that this is almost unavoidable that you, you this this crime is so pervasive and these people are so good at what they do it was only a matter of time and what we're going to do now is work on how you're going to make sure it never happens again yeah i, I think that you really identify the key piece of this is that people feel that they were somehow to blame for having been taken advantage of. But mm -hmm. as you say, the scam artists are, they have um, perfected their craft in such right. a way that they know how to get through people's defenses and take advantage of them. And I think it's really helpful for people to know there is an organization like Metro West Legal Services that they can contact or in other parts of the state, other branches of this Clavic group to help them so that they can educate themselves more about it. And by educating themselves, potentially they'll have conversations with other friends and family who then those people are now somewhat less likely perhaps to be scammed because now they understand what some of the mechanisms are that get used and that trip people up. Yeah. I think some of what Elizabeth said highlights how important it is to reach out for help as soon as possible. Yeah. If you're embarrassed, you sometimes say, oh, I don't want anybody to know this. But you're still open for this to happen. You might not get that first bit of money back or a large chunk of money. But if you reach out as soon as possible, people like Elizabeth can help you take the steps to protect that from happening again. So mm -hmm. don't be embarrassed. Call. Yeah. yeah. And I guess that's really the challenge is to not to not just just dig a hole for yourself, stressed out about what just happened, as opposed to saying, oh, my God. I need to protect myself for the future. And that's going to be a real challenge. And I, but I suppose, you know, Elizabeth, as, as you were saying, one of the challenges is the scam keeps changing. The, 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 what, it, what is, as, as Grace said, this, these folks are good at this, which means they're constantly looking for something new because that's the goal is that it's new enough that you don't think, you know, you're not automatically just triggering and saying, oh yeah, this is a scam, right? So, right. so how do you get past that, right? That's gotta be a real challenge. It is, and, and really there's, what I try to say in general is that once this has happened, you, you have to have kind of an, you have to make yourself overly sensitive to the possibility that communication, especially electronically and by telephone, is just not what it seems. Yeah. Um, at least, at least for, you know, a, a good period of time, maybe a year or two past the victimization, right? And that there, it, there are 
groups and organizations, including my own, that you know can help somebody, right? To identify, like, I just got this. It says it's from the IRS, and it says I owe you know money, and that they can help me. Is this true? And I would tell the person, well, here's here's the good news. IRS has a number, right? And that number is published and is completely legitimate. So if you get a letter on the IRS and it's a legitimate letter, you don't need to call the number on that letter. You can call the number on the IRS website and then you'll know you're talking to the IRS. Right? And then you can say, I think I got a letter from you. It's dated March you know, 15th of 2022. Do, do you have that letter? Because if the IRS truly did send it to you, they have a copy of the letter. They could say, yeah, and, and you owe us money. <laughs> right. Right? right? That's the bad news. The good news is, we, you know, it's really us. The bad news is you owe us some right. money. Right, bad, yeah. bad news is you owe us, right? <laughs> yeah. And here's, you know, there are, there's ways that you could work with the uh, IRS public advocate who can help do payment plans and so forth. That is a legitimate way of uh, resolving IRS debt. Um, but that's that's the key. That's what I try to impress upon, you know, uh, people that I interact with. Right. The first step is if you've got a question on the authenticity of something. Go to the source. Go to the sources website. Right. Um, the problem is with the emails. Right. You're just getting some random email that might look like it's a legitimate communication. Right. It might look like it's coming from Amazon or PayPal or or something like that. But those businesses also have, you know, published toll free, you know, customer service numbers. Um, and so I always say, don't click through anything on an email. Don't, you know, don't provide any information. Um, go, go to the source yourself. If you've got a question about um, a, what you need to do or, or your account is yeah. somehow in jeopardy. So Grace, can I, I just want to follow up with one, one, one other question. So, I know if I'm a senior and this has happened, you know, and I'm embarrassed about this, I'm like, oh, do I really want to call the police? You know, do I really want to call the DA? You know, it's kind of who, who do I call? So if they're talking to you, right, can they feel kind of comfortable that if they're talking to you, that you might be able to help them by dealing with any of those other players, right? Right. So, because I guess the question is always, how do Going back to Grace's point of the embarrassment, all how do I get over this kind of hurdle that, oh God, you know, do I really want to start? Do I want to call law enforcement? Do I want the police at my door? You know, do I want any of that stuff? So if in, in, and if you're the window, well, you're kind of a, you're a smiley, happy person, right? If you're the window, it may make a lot of people feel a lot better about that, you know, for the people who are watching right now, you know. I hope so. I mean, sometimes there's a there's a moment, right, where it, a client might say, well, geez, I, so the money did get, st- money was sent to me, but it, it turns out it was a fake check. Um, and, but I, I did deposit it, you know, into the account. And then, and then my, the bank froze my account because they think they suspected it was a fake check. You know, does that, does that make me a criminal? All right. And it's, it's a valid point. Bad news is I don't practice criminal law. I do civil law. So, you know, I can't advise on criminal culpability, right? But what I, you know, I, I, I always urge to the extent that there, there's a genuine concern that there is a, a, a crime that the person who I'm speaking to committed, they can get, you know, a, a, re, a referral to a criminal attorney who can assess that culpability, Okay. But, you know, in one occasion, I have reached out to the district attorney's office and I said, you know, hey, based on these facts, you think the DA's office is, you know, hot to file, you know, press criminal charges? And they'll say, yeah, we can't make any guarantees, but that is highly unlikely, right? Um, and that, you know, I can provide that feedback to, to a client. Um, I will have to say, you know, as part of this legal aid and a part of this grant, one of the things I love about the Clavic initiative is that through the office of MLRI and the efforts of Jamie Sabino, we, we have so many uh, people uh, statewide that we can reach out to and we can lean on for their advice. So I don't feel like I'm in my, even though I'm the only Clavic attorney here, um, Obviously, I can talk to my colleagues who practice elder law right across the hallway here and who've been doing that for 40 years. Um, but I also can reach out 
to Jamie Sabino and other Clavic attorneys, and we share knowledge and information. So that can also be really helpful to and clients. The, and you said the DA lives upstairs. <laughs> yes, I don't. I don't go. That's up, also I, handy. I respect privacy, and you know, just call and only get only go places that I'm I'm welcome and invited. But <laughs> I, I uh, yeah, I mean, there's we, we have a there's a in the legal aid community. I'm finding we have a real. Um, collegial atmosphere and a lot of, um, and, and everybody's, you know, just willing to share information and resources and tips. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if I, if I don't really know the answer to anything, I I don't pretend and I, I seek help and advice, um, from my, my, my colleagues who have a lot more years of experience in this, and then might have a better idea. So as we draw to a close here, Elizabeth, would you like to give the phone number where people can reach you at Metro West Legal Services. Sure, absolutely. All callers with any issues, including identity theft, that would like to see if they qualify for assistance at Metro West Legal Services should call 1-800-696-1501. An intake um, coordinator will talk to you, ask you a series of questions, get the gist of the, the situation that you're presented with, and then refer you to the right advocate, which may be me. Okay. And Jamie, is your office a number that people could also reach out to? Yes. And it would be helpful if you don't live in Metro West, but you've seen this or somebody's told you about it, and you want to find out where you should call, you can definitely call me at 617 357 0700 extension 325. Great. There's also a website, massclavic.org, and that's M A S S C L A V C.org. And if you just put in mass and clavicle, you'll come up with mass clavic. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, is there any last? bit of advice you want to give or anything that we didn't touch on that you want people to know about either initiative? No, I think that's the only thing that I would add to what Lisbeth was saying is the IRS never asks for payment in gift cards or iTunes cards. Anything that asks you for a gift card, don't do it. Unless you know it's your grandson. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Great advice, great advice. So, so thank you so much for this. And Grace, once again, thank you so much for finding these, these great guests. This was the point of this show is to really, for folks, especially for folks who are not totally on the internet, but are actually watching local cable instead. So to, to give them a sense, and now they kind of see who you are, you know, and they've got a phone number, it's a big deal. So for a lot of, on behalf of Frank and Mary, thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Grace. Folks, these are friendly faces. If you've got it, if you want to learn about any of this stuff in advance, or if, you know, if it's things are bad and you're really nervous about, oh, do I talk to somebody? Well, just call them, just call them and find out. So thank you so much, all of you. And thank you for watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Glad to have you.